Hello, uh, review number two. Now, um, let's say I'm going from the premise that I have that everything originates from God, and that which does not originate from God is an illusion. Now, we as uh, fellow workers with God, uh, we're in Christ, so we are the Son of God. God teaching us how to create as He creates. God creates with His Thought. Thoughts are things, and thoughts incarnate themselves and become things, our experiences. And because we have the power of thinking and we have the power of creating, um, one writer, theologian, says we were all in Christ uh, in this bliss, and humanity wondered what it would be like to be separate from God. That thought set everything into motion. And we now have a world that we live in, in time, that appears to be separate from God. Now what has replaced the voice of God, we all have an ego. Now that ego has replaced the voice of God and is stationed in us in a position in our being where we can't remember our eternal selves. Now, so that means uh, we decided to govern ourselves by setting up another law other than the law of life. The law that we set up turned out to uh, be what I call in term the law of sin and death. In this law of sin and death, there's right and wrong, there's good and evil. And we try to, uh, we're trying humanity, when I say we, humanity is trying to, um, become like God through learning what is good and evil. So our bodies are learning instruments. It's not who we are. We are spirits. We have a soul and we live in a body. So our body is literally a learning instrument to help us um, evolve into being one like God. This is not God's idea for us. He created he created men in his image and his likeness. And if we had just left things alone, we would be fine. But anyway, um, so then in evaluating this and setting from this position, and everybody has a heart to hear things as I'm saying it. Now, if you have a heart to hear what I'm saying and it sounds and rings true in you, then continue with the thought and you'll find a blessing for your life. You will find direction for your life. You'll see things become a lot more clear in your understanding, your, your awareness will be more acute. And one of the things that we said, because God does not have in what we call heaven, any evil, any opposite to him, any darkness, then evil itself is an illusion. If it's not in God, God is reality. God is certainty, he is reality. And if evil doesn't exist with him and he doesn't acknowledge evil, then evil is an illusion. It does not exist. It exists for us, because we acknowledge it, we give life and power to it, but it really doesn't exist, it's an illusion. Good is truth and reality. Good is truth and reality. Number three, truth will dispel error. Truth will dispel error, therefore good will dispel evil. Number four, evil is the result of our thought, not God's. Number five, hell and the devil are illusions. Number six, God does not destroy any human soul, for he does not destroy himself. He is one with us. He's not at war with himself. He's not going to destroy himself. Number seven, God knows everything and therefore is incapable of error or evil. Number eight, the single function of the subconscious mind or the universal mind of Christ is to manifest into form or circumstance the seed of thought. Number nine, we have a complete freedom of choice in the kinds of thoughts we wish to plant in the garden of the subconscious mind. And remember, thoughts are things, and we have the complete freedom to plant into the garden of the subconscious any thought or thing, anything that we imagine. 
we are free to plant that in the subconscious and it will create a circumstance or it become evidence of, in life of what your thought is or was. Number 10, no human being can assume the responsibility for a single thing other than their own thinking for the universal subconscious mind does all creating. Number 11, mortality and ethics do not always follow the law of cause and effect, but the use of spiritual law always follows the law of cause and effect. Number 12, it is because moral law is human made while spiritual law is the essence of God. Moral law, because it's human made, it change. It changed with time, it changed with circumstance, it'll change on a whim. But spiritual law, because it's the essence of God, never change. And in spiritual law, there's always a cause for the effect. Number 13, the proper use of spiritual law is acceptance and faith. Number 13, the proper use of spiritual law is acceptance and faith. You've got to accept spiritual law. So if something is happening, you have to ask spiritually, what's the cause for this to be happening in my life? And allow the Spirit of God to show you the cause and why you have the effects that you're experiencing. Number 14, you cannot demand anything from the universal conscious mind by willing it to happen. You can't demand anything by willing it to happen. Number 15, guidance and inspiration in the paths of truth and achievement can be yours through faith and reliance in the power greater than you are. So now in this meditation, we want you to, to listen to these words. And if you can uh, um, record the words on the meditation, okay, and rehearse it, remember in the morning, in the evening, find a place where you're not going to be interrupted. And, and just by rehearsing and saying it, it'll get into your subconscious, and then it's with you because your subconscious is perfect. It remembers everything. Now, your conscious can't always recall perfectly, but your subconscious can always remember. So in your meditation, you're taking the place of your conscious, and you are, you are uh, um, bringing yourself into awareness of what's in your spirit and what your spiritual mind is saying and that will become your awareness and will become your conscious mind and and you will consciously be alert and change and change your thought and how you see the subconscious and your reality and your circumstances will change as well i know that i am one with the mind of christ i know this mind is perfect and i may rely upon it for complete guidance in all my daily affairs the mind of Christ, this great subconscious mind, this mind of God, knows no evil or limitation or lack. It simply creates in my experience that which I believe and accept. Therefore, I deny all evil and all error. When my eyes and my senses are deluded with the apparent circumstance of evil, I turn away, lifting my thought to the perfection and abundance and love of all the universe. I know that God does not create evil. And I know that by using the power of God, I am able to deny evil, which is only an illusion, simply error, and will not stand before truth. For the great reality is good. God is good, which is always attempting to manifest himself or itself in and through me. I know that error or evil is the result of my own thought, is the result of error on my part, is the result of isolating myself from the power of the mind of Christ. I know that the mind of Christ is constantly creating in my experience that which I think, and if evil is manifested it has come from my own thought, and my own thought may as quickly deny it. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 reads, 
casting down arguments and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I do not will anything to happen, for I am not bigger than God. I simply understand that the law of creation is bigger than I am and that I cannot help my thoughts and beliefs from becoming real in my experience. Therefore, I hold my thoughts steadfastly on the good. Philippians 4, 8 reads, Finally, brother, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. I do not, I do, I'm sorry, I do not do this with effort, as if I were commanding something to act. I simply relax in the contemplation of the good, secure in the knowledge that everything rests with a power much greater than I am. I trust this power. I have complete faith and confidence in this power. I rely upon this power for guidance in my daily affairs. I refuse to accept evil, and evil is gone. I accept good and the supply and love of Christ are mine. The love of Christ, the universal mind in Christ, they're mine. James chapter 4. Now I'll change one word here in James chapter 4 verse 7 uh, to match this. Therefore God, submit to God, resist evil which we refer to as the devil, hard times, being caught in an error, resist that, and he will flee from you. Amen. Now, this is from uh, Brother Anderson's book, uh, Three Magical Words, and you can go there and, and read the whole book and pull all these meditations together. And you're free to do that. In fact, I would advise that you do that. But I just want to encourage you today to take these two meditations, one uh, last week and today, and begin to think on these things. And you'll find that your whole life, your circumstances will begin to change. Then give it some time. You didn't get into the situation that you're in overnight. So you have to be consistent. You have to release your faith. You have to be confident. that as I change my mind with confessing, I will, I will be transformed, and my thoughts will be transformed, and I will renew my mind, I will change my thinking, and when my thinking change, so will my circumstances. Because I know, I am fully confident that God has plans for my life, and none of those plans include defeat. Talk to you next time.